the next part of this is how to make iPhone apps. MVC, one pattern to rule them all. And again, MVC is an acronym, Model View Controller. All right, and they're going to show you pictures in here and some other stuff. But as it says, the idea is that the objects in your app will take on all three of these roles. All right, and it may be, it may be that you leave one or more of them out depending on the complexity of the program. All right, so notice what we have here. Very simple one sentence explanations of each one. The model represents the data in the application. All right, the view represents the user interface. The controller represents the communication between the, the view, rather, and the model. All right, it takes the data from the model and it communicates it to the view for the display. So in other words, uh, there it is. Look at the picture here. Because if you understand this, you understand what you need to understand. And that is, notice that there is no direct communication between the view and the model. Everything that happens, happens via the controller. The controller is kind of the traffic cop. So it gets messages that come in from the model, and it sends them back to the model. Messages that come in from the view, and it sends them back to the view. All right, so it's possible a message could come in from the view, to the controller, the controller could say, oh, and then send it off to the model or in the other direction. But the idea is there's no direct communication here. Now, if you say, sort of sounds familiar, it should, because it's kind of the same kind of separation that we do between HTML and JavaScript and CSS. All right? And the CSS is kind of the view. Depends on what book you read to see which one's the model and which one's the controller. I, I kind of look at the JavaScript as being more of the controller. But it, it, it's not a great uh, analogy because there is communication sometimes between the three when you're talking about it in, in the sense of, uh, of HTML documents. The key thing to realize, though, is in here we're trying to do a separation. Why? So that if you want to or need to, you can swap out different parts. Now, I used to use a book in here, and I actually found it the other day, that I used first semester for people. In fact, Mike will probably tell you that he saw he used this book, or one like it. And it's a Gaddis book, and it's starting out with programming, logic, and design. All right? And one of the things that they keep talking about in that book is that when you go in and you start building applications, you know, all right, let's, I, let's just assume that the language uses functions. It could be functions, it you could be methods, it really doesn't matter. All right? But there's a couple terms here that you should at least be familiar with. And you may have heard them from me or from somebody else already. I don't know. But you want to work with coupling and with things being cohesive. All right? And the coupling is, when you, when you think about it, it's the relationship between modules. Again, the modules can be methods, they can be functions, it doesn't matter. All right? On the other hand, when you talk cohesive, that's the inner strength of a module. And most of us, when you think of a couple, you think of a couple that's going to be successful in life as being strong, right? I would at least. But what you actually want with coupling is you want this, ideally, to be loose. And ideally, you want this to be strong. That's, again, that's what you're shooting for in there, is loose coupling and strong cohesion. And in English, what that means is, imagine that I've got a hierarchy here. All right, so I've got, you know, I've got over here someplace, I've got a main, you know, and main calls function one, and it calls function two, and it calls function three, and it calls function four, and it calls function five. All right? And then function one calls function F1A, and it calls function F1B. All right? And function three calls F3A and F3B. These don't mean anything. All right? And finally, function 5 calls F5A, and it calls F5B. If I wrote this correctly, and I used what I just told you, 
ideally at least, if, again, this, this function right here is calling this one here. All right, it's calling both of these. This one here, F3, is calling both of these. And F5 here is calling both of these. Does that make sense to everybody, at least looking at it? Does that make sense? Well, if you've got loose coupling, what that means is if I make a change to F1, if I make a change to that, what should that affect? It's not a trick. What should that affect? F1A and F1B. It should have no effect on anything that's over here. Nothing. And if I've done that, then I've got loose coupling. Now, you can say, well, geez, what if you have to change main? Well, yeah, that could change everything because it's, everything is dependent upon main. But the idea is if I come back in here and I swap out and somebody comes up with a better way of writing F4 and I swap out the old one and swap in the new one, no one's the wiser. It's just like, you know, when you come in here, if, if somebody had told you that, hey, did you know that in, in Windows 8 they've got a new calculator in there? Looks the same, but it runs totally differently. And what do you mean it runs totally? Yeah, it runs about twice as fast now, but you probably didn't realize it. Well, typically, if you're going to swap something out, like if I'm going to swap out F4 for a new F4, it's not because I want one that works worse. You know, I'm, I'm going to do it It's because I want one that works better. And the idea with this is if I have loose coupling, I can move stuff in and out of here on an as-needed basis. All right? And it'll have as little effect to other modules as possible. Now, with cohesion, you, you may or may not remember this, but one of the things we talked about really back in the first semester is I said, imagine you've got 10 pieces of data. First name, middle name, last name, address, city, state, zip, home phone, work phone, email, those 10 per pieces of information. Ideally, if you're writing a cohesive program, that's 10 different modules. And each module is doing one thing and only one thing. All right, if you've got that. Then if you've done that, it's a strongly, co oh, those are strongly cohesive modules. Unfortunately, that's not the way most people program. Most people say, well, it's information about a person. I'm going to take all 10 of those things, and I'm going to stick them into the same method, which is okay. But then, uh, then that method gets a little bigger because somebody adds something else, then somebody adds something else, and then somebody adds something else, and pretty soon that one method is now five or 600 lines long. And don't think that doesn't happen because it does all the time. Whereas, again, if we had just written it as cohesive modules that just did one thing, they would stay small or smaller. And if you had a problem, you'd know right where to go. So you always want to shoot for loose coupling and strong cohesion. All right? And that's the same kind of thing in here. If somebody comes in and says, oh, I've got a brand new model, all right, I should be able to swap that out, and it shouldn't have any effect on the view or the controller. Now, if I make changes to the controller, since it grabs stuff coming in and going out, that might have major effects. But that's why you do it. And that's what the author talks about in here. All right? The other thing is when you start coming in and you start creating Objective-C programs, some of this stuff is created for you automatically. Okay? So you don't even have to worry about creating it. And it's like, well, do I need to put code in it? Depends on what you want it to do. And we're going to look at that, like I said, hopefully on Wednesday. I don't want to do this for another period. what you get in your in your program in your iOS program is you get a view controller for lack of better words right now what a view controller is is it represents a screen okay one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a single view application what that means is it's something that could that could be basically be on one screen and we'll probably create something like a calculator just like a simple calculator where everything would be on one screen that's not always how things work. So fairly soon after that, we'll create a multiple view application. All right. Where as an example, let's say that on the first page, I had an address book. So I have every one of you in class here. Let's just say I've got you all in here. But I've got, and they're all hyperlinked. So if I click on the hyperlink for Mark Lestarge, it goes to another page, and it's got just information about Mark. Name, address, city, state, zip, all the goodies. Well, then I would need multiple controllers, one controller for all the names and another controller which would hold each individual name. I don't, if, I've got, if I've got 100 people in my address book, I don't need 100 different controllers. 
I need two. One to hold my address book and one to hold each individual person's information. All right? And that's what we're going to be looking at. All right. Well, the good news is things like overriding, you know what that means already. We talked about overriding. We talked about overloading in Java. The ideas are similar in this language. All right? Again, I, to me, it's not going to pay much to go over this code right now. It'll make a lot more sense when we actually have stuff up on the screen. Okay? Anybody want to take a wild guess right here? See that? that it, that's in gray, and I'll make it double its size. Right there, in bold gray. All right? When, when, when does, that, when does that, that method get called? When the view loads. Yeah. And so what do you want to do in there? Anything that you want to have happen on the screen after it loads. Now, in this first article, the set of articles I was going to give you right here, I, what I liked about this is he starts out really small. I mean, real simple. Literally. He says, OK, just go and create a brand new project. Don't even put a damn thing in it. Then run it. And set it up to so that it's using the uh, iPhone simulator. And it looks like you've got an iPhone right on your screen. And it's actually a functioning simulator. The buttons on it and stuff are like your buttons on your iPhone, etc. And then he says, OK, now go back and just add a label. And it's the old famous or infamous Hello World. So we add a label, and we all, all we put in there is Hello World. That's it. Boom. Run it, run it again, and now you see that you've got your simulator with a label on it that says, Hello World. Not, not very much, not very exciting, etc. But then he, said, he says, then let's go back and let's, let's make another change to it. So let's go back and rewrite a, write a brand new application. And what we'll have is on the, bot, on the bottom of it, we'll have a button. In the middle of it, we'll have a text box. And on the top of it, we'll have a label. All right? The idea is that when you start it up, you put some default text in the label up on top. Then when you run the program, you can, you can go in and you can put anything you want in the text box. And when you click the button, whatever you put in the, in the, in the text box replaces what was in the label. Does that make sense? Pretty simple application when you think about it. All right? And then he gets done with that, and he says, well, you know what? That's, that's good. We built that, and it wasn't hard. Literally, they use this X code, and he drags the controls out. And he says, what if you want to build a control, and you want to build a control using code? All right? And he shows you how to do that. And what he does is he says, OK, that, then when we, we build that, and we want that control to show, we're going to build that in our view did load. Because we want to make sure that it's already showing on the screen before we programmatically go and add another label to it. So that's what he does next. It doesn't sound like much, and it isn't. But it's good in that it acclimates you to the kind of stuff that goes on in here. All right. All right. At this point, the view has just been displayed to the user. Well, if I wanted stuff to be set up before it displays, I would put it in view did load. If I wanted something to display in there after it's already been up and showing, I could put it in view did up here. All right. Notice, if the view is about to be removed from the screen, you can put it in view will disappear. And you go, I don't know what that means. Yeah, sure you don't. We did this in the, in, in the C-sharp class, those of you who were in that class. You know, I, I showed you almost right from the beginning that in our exit button, when you clicked it, it would bring up a message box that said, are you sure you want to close? That's the kind of thing you could put in view will disappear. So before it disappeared, you could tell the user, hey, it's about to, the program's about to end. Are you sure you want it to? And if they said no, then you could keep them in the program as an example. All right. View did disappear. Well, after the view has disappeared from the display. So maybe it's done. You know, Thank you for using my program. Have a nice day. As it says, you might not need to put code in very many of these methods. Or you might put code in a lot of them. It depends on what you are trying to do. All right. Now, what I want to do is, and I hope we can do it quickly. First of all, just so you see it, because now they're here. That's what your Xcode screen is going to look like, just so you know. And no, it won't have those pretty colors. Okay. But this area right here, as it shows you right here, this is kind of like, like a Windows Explorer area, 
kind of like it. And if you click uh, something in here, it's going to show up in the editor area in here. Does that make sense? All right. This, if you run the program and you have, you have any console output, it's going to appear right here. This serves triple duty. What does that mean? That means what's going to show in here depends on what it is you're trying to do. All right, and you say, well, that sounds stupid. Well, it, it make a lot more sense when you actually see it up and running. But if you look down at the bottom here, this area that's right there, where the arrow is there, this kind of square right there, that's the equivalent of your toolbox. So if you want to go and add a label, you'll literally sit there and grab the label tool and drag it out into there. That's one way of doing it. Okay? So it's going to be similar to stuff you've done before, but don't say, well, geez, could I move this around? and make, don't, don't, play with, don't play with this screen. All right? I'm just going to recommend that you don't. Stuff is in there, and there's all sorts of tutorials and stuff. They all suppose that you're not going to move anything around. All right? As it's... Yes, well, let me, let me answer, see if I'm answering your question. One of the files that you're going to find in here, you can't see it in here right now because it's covered probably by the word navigator, but one of the files that's in there is going to be called main.storyboard. And when you click on that file, it's going to actually show you the equivalent of like your form. All right? And what you'll have to do then is you can play with this screen. You can manipulate it in a lot of ways. You can make sections bigger, smaller, etc. And you might say, well, as I'm working on this, I need this to take up the whole. You can have this disappear if you want to. And there's buttons over here that allow them to appear and disappear. All right. So you could decide, for example, all you wanted on your screen was the editor area and maybe your, your object library and your inspector up here. And the rest of it you could have disappear. So I don't know if I'm answering your question. All right. It, it's, 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 no, it's not like a, there's a source view and a design view. Well, yes, yeah, there is. And, and what it is is if you've got your main.storyboard showing right here, all right, that's, that's kind of like being in design view. But what's, what you're going to see over here is you can open up an, an alternative editor right there. And in that one, what's going to happen is you're going to have your code right there. <clears throat> so you're not going to be, you know, as far as switching back and forth, what you're going to end up doing a lot of times is you're going to be taking stuff that you've already created graphically, holding down on that key like I told you, clicking and dragging it up over here, and it's going to write code for you. All right, so yes, it's similar. No, it's not identical. All right. So the next thing that's in here, we're going to go through this. I'm not going to go through this last one at all, making, uh, creating the demo app. I'm not going to go through a bit of that, all right? But I, I do want to talk about this with you and this in Xcode 5 tutorial for beginners. All right, just so you know. Let's say that uh, it's the end of the semester, okay, and Zach decides, you know, that he really decides, you know, I, I kind of like this stuff and I really would rather have my own Mac and be working on that, okay? That's what Stefan did last year. He literally, uh, he told me he let his dad know that he would like a Mac and his dad went out and bought him one. All right? and. Uh, so he used his own. So he did a lot of this stuff. But I would recommend that eventually, at least, you go over to the Mac. You, know, you set up an iTunes account for yourself. Even if you plan on not using it, it's good, because then you can go out to the Mac store, and they've got all sorts of stuff out there for free. I mean, all sorts of stuff. Xcode, the editor, is free. Their operating system, which right now I think is still Mountain Lion. All right, it's going to be Maverick. No, it, oh, it's Maverick now, and it's going to be Yosemite come the middle of October. That's free. Upgrading is free. But some of the stuff that's in there you do have to pay for and you would need an account. All right. I mean, they've got tons of games. So if you know, and, and if you do have an iPhone or an iPad, you probably know all this stuff already anyway. All right. This picture that they're trying to show you right there, even when I went and, and made it, uh, even when I went in and changed the layout and made it landscape, all right, even when I did that, you still can't see everything. But it's the same picture, basically, with code in it as the one you see here, or if you like that picture better, here. All right. And he goes in and explains what each section is here, 
where the navigator is, where this is, where this is. Again, it's not going to pay because we don't have it up right now. All right. The only thing I will tell you is what I am going to do when we go through this is I'm going to go through this and be very deliberate. And if you want to try doing something on your own, almost always, in fact, I would, I would even go so far as to say always, I'll show you how to do something. And always, there will be another way of doing it. I'm not going to show you four or five ways of doing the same thing. I'm just going to show you, to me, what makes the most sense to do it, all right? the most straightforward way. And that's what I'm going to show you. Now, if you decide that you want to go out there and just so you know, this will be more maybe something you'll even want to do next semester, not so much now. But uh, under the iPhone class, I put a, just there's a boatload of stuff I put out here that I found last year. And there's all sorts of, there's Objective C, a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of Xcode stuff that's in here, including an Xcode overview. I think one of these, at least, is literally from Apple. I don't know if that's the one or not, but it's several hundred pages. All right. I'm by no means do I mean to be an ex say that I'm an expert on this because I'm not. 123 pages, and this is from Apple. Now, what's going to happen is this is a little old. When I say it's a little old, it's probably 2012. And not only that, unless they've got an upgrade, this, I think, is for Xcode 4. And Xcode 4 does look a little different than Xcode 5 does. I haven't seen 6 yet. But 6, from what I hear, looks a little different than 5 looked. The functionality is the same. But what they try to do is they try to listen to what people say. And it's like, do this, do this, move this here, make this easier. And they try to do it. All right. So if you want to go through here, they'll explain what each one of the areas in here are. All I'm telling you is as we go through this stuff, you know, you might say, oh, why, you know, you're showing it to us this way. I wonder if you could do it that way. Then try it. All right. That's the, be the, the best way to learn. Notice it's color-coded. You've seen this kind of thing before. It will be color-coded. And there's a very strong IntelliSense here. Okay? And it doesn't work exactly like the IntelliSense that you're used to in, in Visual Studio, but it's close. want to show you, and I don't think it's here. There's the simulator, okay, right there. No. Um, I wanted to try to answer Kelly's question. I think it's in one of these, but boy, I don't have for the life of me know which one it is. Uh, it's going to have to be either that one or that one. So you can't see this very well, but over that's the interface builder. All right, so you see there they've got a label, they've got a button, and a text box on it. And what you'll see, it, I can't stretch any further over, is you'll have another editor that'll come up there. You'll constantly be dragging stuff back and forth. All right. And what I liked about this series of articles, again, this is a little bit older, but what it's what I, I mentioned to you before, and that is for the first one, he does almost nothing in the first project. Then the second project, he, he goes in and he adds a little bit of stuff to it. What I just told you, he's got the button, the label, and the text box. All right. Then in the third, then he creates one more project when he does a little bit more. So the first two projects have got a view and they've got a controller, but they really have no model. And on the third project, he adds a model to show you how all three of the pieces work together with one. So I wanted to go until about 4.30. That's it. All right. What I'm going to do is I am going to give you the, hand, the other handout, because otherwise I'll lose it. So this is the other one. Again, sorry. I, this, is, this is your materials fee in action, I guess. So this is the other one. Unfortunately, for some reason, some of the pages that are in here will be going vertical. Some will be turning upside down. I don't know why.
I, I don't want to go through this again. I want us, I want us to go through something like this, but I want us to go through it when we're on machines. Well, you know what happened was it was the end of the semester, and, and I and, and I was kidding with him at the end of the semester, and I said, "What are you going to do with that?" <clears throat> and he goes, "I don't know. Probably put it on eBay or something." So I went home, and he says, "You know what? Anybody who wants to buy it?" I said, "My daughter might." So all he wanted he, uh, was he wanted me. He, the father bought it for him, but he bought it on a payment thing. He wanted me to finish the payments for him. That's good. Yeah, that was it. So it's hers. She's never met him, but she loves him. Yeah, she loves him. Because that's her favorite thing in the world. She loves that machine board. She loves her father. <laughs>